Hello, this is the next video in my little series on characteristic functions, moment generating functions, and factorial generating functions. Um, I'm going to call it part two because we're specifically looking at the characteristic function of x. And we'll just jump right in. We'll do a little background first before we get into a uh, couple more properties of a characteristic function. Um, first, briefly talk about a complex conjugate. And then... That is, if we have uh, a complex number z, a plus bi, it's complex conjugate, you just put a negative there, so it's a minus bi. Um, something a little more subtle is if we have a complex number this, which is e to the i tx, its complex conjugate is minus i tx, which is this. Okay, and now our first little property of, of uh, complex numbers with a, their complex conjugate. If the complex number equals its complex conjugate, then z has to be part of the real number system. So there's no imaginary component. And the proof is very simple. It's if we have this situation where the complex number equals a complex conjugate and we subtract a from both sides, we get this. Then what we're going to do is multiply both sides by i. We get this, i squared, i squared. Well, this is minus 1, and that's minus 1. So that implies minus b is b. And um, so either uh, 1 equals minus 1, which, of course, is silly. So the only solution is that b is equal to 0. And that's what we are saying. If b is 0 then this number is a real number. Um, one of the properties we discussed in part one was if you have a, a characteristic function, say, of x, and then you take it times uh, negative, then it's very straightforward to create its um, characteristic function. But here it says, let's assume we have a characteristic function for this random variable minus x. It is the complex conjugate for the moment the characteristic function for x. So a little proof of that is the characteristic function of minus x is um, the characteristic function for x, but you stick in the minus next to the t. And then this is, by definition, this. But cosine is an even function, and sine is an odd function. So this minus sign can go away, and this minus sign can be brought out front. Well, that is the complex conjugate for um, of the characteristic function of x, and that's what we wanted to show. So here, um, so if a characteristic function is real valued, well, a characteristic function is real value if and only if the random variable has a distribution that is symmetric about zero. So the if and only if means that if the characteristic function is real valued, then x has a distribution that's symmetric. But it also means that if x has a distribution that is symmetric, then the characteristic function is real value. So it kind of works both ways. So here's a simple little proof. Let's assume x is symmetric about 0. Then this relationship is hold. So the probability of being bigger than some number is the same as the probability of being less than the negative of that number. That's the, kind of the definition of symmetric. But if you take this negative to the other side and think of that as another random variable, it's saying that these two uh, distributions are equal. And so... Um, x and minus x have the same distribution. So now we haven't covered this yet. That's in the next this in the next video, where if they have the same distribution, the PDF or probably mass function, then the characteristics functions are the same. And it also works backwards or the other way too. If they have the same characteristic function, it means they have the same uh, PDF. So, since they have the same distribution, this implies that the characteristic functions are equal. But we just showed that the characteristic function of minus x is the complex conjugate 
the characteristic function for x. Okay, and that was from page one. But since the the uh, uh, characteristic function of x equals its complex conjugate, then that says that this has to be a real valued function. And so we're done. So technically this is just one way. So that you have to prove it this way and then prove it back the other way. But you can actually just work backwards and come up with the same same proof. So that's all I'm going to do for that that property. Now this one is a little more involved or not this one but the next one I do now, this is a little background on what a lattice distribution is so if X is a random variable it takes on values of this so a plus K H where a and H are constants and H is greater than 1 and K takes on integral values of one of the following four it's either 0 to n or 0 to infinity or minus n to positive n or all integers so k can be in any one of those and 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 as long as this property holds is called uh, the x is considered to have what's called a lattice distribution okay and a quick example is if, if x is binomial then x is a lattice distribution because a is 0 h is 1 and k goes from 0 to n and if it's a Poisson distribution it's a lattice just consider lattice distribution because a equals 0, h equals 1, and k goes from 0 to infinity. So now on to our last property for this video um, is, is this, that uh, let's let uh, phi of x of t be the characteristic function of x. Then the first property, x is a lattice distribution if and only if the modulus of the characteristic function is 1 for some t not equal to 0. And uh, we'll prove this one. Property 2, x is a lattice distribution if and only if um, the characteristic function is periodic with period 2, which is kind of what this means. And in the interest of time, we'll only prove the 1, but it will, we'll come back to this in a later video. So this particular proof will prove it both ways. We'll prove it, going, I'm going to call it to the right. So we assume X has a lattice distribution. And we look at the characteristic function of X, which by definition is this. But since X is a lattice distribution, we can plug in different values for little x. They all take on this property. You know, they have to equal this for all K in that set Z, um, where the, it takes on integral values. Well, if you look at this, the ITA is constant in regards to the K, so that can be taken out front, and that's what we do here. Now, this probability is sort of a function of K, and so I just call it PK just to save notation. Um, and then I expand what this is using Euler's formula, which is this, cosine and sine, and... Um, Somehow we want to show that, that we can make this have a modulus of 1 for some t value um, not equal to 0. Oh, forgot the little pk at the side there. Um, so if it, let's say this is a, now that's the same value, tkh, tkh. If this is 2 pi, then this is 0 and it goes away. And if this is 2 pi, it's 1. And then that gets, you know, that gets pulled in. So you're summing the probably mass function over all of its values, and it equals one. And then this is the only thing left, and it does have a modulus of 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 one. So that's exactly what we do. We let t equal this quantity, k not at zero, and that is not zero. So we plug this in to t, and that's one, and this is zero. So we're only left with this. And we're summing over all the possible values. And since it's a, a distribution function or density function, it, it sums to 1. So that goes away. And we're only left with this. And then in video uh, 2 or 1 of this playlist, we show that the modulus of this characteristic function, which is this, does equal 1. 
and we use that t which is not equal to zero so we should we proved it going to the right now let's prove it going to the left and that is that the modulus of the characteristic function is some value equals one and this is for some theta some theta makes this one you know um, that's that's all we can assume and so now let's look at the characteristic function of x by definition it's this and we're saying that it's this value this value okay we don't, and uh, so if if we um, if I divide by this and then bring it up you know in front but then it can be taken in because it's a constant we get this right here so this expectation equals one now one is a real number so the imaginary component of the complex number is is um, zero so this expanded is cosine plus I sine you know times this uh, number here as the angle but it's real so that the sine part is zero so it goes away so we're only left with the cosine of that angle equaling one now if I take this and subtract it over and then take the one into the expectation we get this so this equals one so remember the expected value is you know it's like an integral sign of this function between the x-axis um, but this is uh, well times the density so it's the average value of this over the over the domain but we're saying it equals zero but this is a positive value one minus cosine x is always positive it's never negative but we're saying the average value is zero so the only way that this can happen is if this piece here is equal to zero okay so this can only happen which can only happen if um oh if this is a multiple of two pi so cosine of two pi is one and then one minus that is this so this is for all values of x so this has to be a constant or a multiple of two pi but that can only happen is if this is discrete and um, a multiple of two pi so it I mean so if we set this piece here equal to two pi times k which is a multiple of, of two pi and solve for x we get this so when x takes on these discrete values then this expectation is zero okay so what that's saying is that this um, this uh, random variable is one equals one with probability one because this if you plug in x at, like this then this is always one and with probability one now this is probably this is equal to one um, when x is in this set so it takes on the value you know, the k is in this z set the integral uh, set of numbers like this which and but this right here is how we define the lattice distribution so if x takes on values here x is a lattice distribution and so we're done so we proved it both ways well and that's all i have for today hope you enjoyed it um, please like the video if you did and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye